Let's continue this conversation on oil with Rich Pontillo, NASDAQ Senior Energy Analyst. So, Rich, I want to start with those gas shortages, those prices at the pump that are surging higher. I think the main and, and number one question for most folks out there is, how long is this going to continue and how bad could it get for consumers at the pumps? Yeah, thanks for having me. Good afternoon. So uh, I think there are a couple of factors at play to consider right now. Um, you know, there's definitely room to or more pressure to the upside on oil prices in the near term. We're heading into a very strong seasonal period into the, uh, the driving season, the summer driving season post Memorial Day. Um, so the expectations are that while oil prices right now are kind of holding steady around $66, as Jared just mentioned, around two-year highs, uh, there are expectations over the next month or two heading into the summer season that there's a little bit more risk to the upside right now. Uh, we just got out of this past first quarter earnings season, and the majority of the U.S.-based producers uh, continue to exhibit and state that they will not be rushing to increase production uh, into a higher oil price. So that, too, will contribute to potential upward pressure uh, on the price of oil. Uh, add to that the fact that, of course, um, uh, vaccine rates are rising in the U.S. Uh, uh, new cases of COVID-19 are continuing to decline in the U.S. Again, all those factors portend to, uh, again, a little bit more risk to the upside for oil prices. Absolutely. I know what you're saying here about the risks to the upside. I'm curious to know how badly or how much longer uh, some of those factors really could prolong the pain at the pump. As you're mentioning, oil producers cutting production, not increasing it. More and more people are hitting the roads, trying to take to the skies. I know jet fuel prices have been a little bit depressed lately, but more and more people are are starting to travel again and starting to fly again. Now, of course, with these gas shortages, folks are now taking to hoarding gasoline uh, when they go and fill up at the pump. So, I mean, just realistically, pragmatically, how bad could things really get now that we have a combination of all of these factors really hitting at once? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, usually, again, if you look at historically the price of oil, it tends to top out right around kind of July, August. And then you kind of have the Labor Day uh, holiday it tends to be kind of the climax of oil prices. And then following Labor Day, that's usually when you see the price of oil start to uh, plateau and then work its way downward into kind of the shoulder uh, late fall and winter period. So, you know, I think for the next probably three months or so, um, you know, that's that's going to be the range we'll, where we'll see prices continue to rise. Of course, now, what can possibly offset that? Um, you know, we're kind of in this tale of two cities in terms of the pandemic, where you see here domestically in the U.S., you're seeing, as I mentioned before, vaccine rates are increasing, uh, new case rates are declining. However, you look overseas, of course, it's been widely publicized about the case rates that are going up in India. You're seeing other parts of the world are starting to experience higher rates of new COVID-19 infections. So, um, you know, the prices could become a little bit disjointed, but certainly here within the U.S., uh, as I mentioned before, some of those factors still uh, will contribute to, to probably, you know, if not a little bit of a higher gas price. Again, it, it will probably have to be bared for probably a couple more months until about August into September. I want to ask you, Rich, about a another factor, which is actually Iran potentially re-entering into the oil market. Now, it is a return that folks are saying is going to be gradual, not a light switch return. But there's already a glut in the market. You know, as you were mentioning, those oil producers really trying to, to keep a lid on the production. So how much could that weigh, that re-entry, the potential re-entry really weigh on the sector going forward uh, once they really start putting out those barrels? Yeah, no, it can. Um, you know, this this has been kind of an ongoing uh, factor that the market's been watching now, right, for many years. So um, I think the market has become a little bit more prone to being able to absorb um, at least kind of the saber rattling. And then, of course, if if new barrels are proven to come onto the market, 
Uh, they tend to be more short term impactful in terms of maybe for the first month or two. And then little by little, the market uh, seems to be able to absorb those. So while I don't want to downplay the, the possible adverse effect, adverse effect that uh, that can have, I think some of the other factors um, might have a greater long term, medium to longer term bearing uh, on the direction of oil prices. But still, nevertheless, um, you know, uh, Middle East conflict, not that this is necessarily conflict, but any types of shifts in policy um, or, or actions that occur, of course, in that region of the world um, are always closely watched by market participants. All right. NASDAQ Senior Energy Analyst Rich Fontillo, thanks so much for joining us today.